The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest today. For 20 years, Selah's music has brought hope and healing to a new generation. Well, today the group joins us to share the backstory of their new album release, Unbreakable. And if you need prayer, we want you to give us a call today. Call us at 1-800-365-3732 or you can email us prayer at lacy.com to reach our prayer line directly. Joining me on the set today, Drew Sumrall. Good to see you, Drew. Good to be with you. Yeah, Good to see been, you. Welcome back. Thank you. You too. World You've been out traveler. about a little bit here. Yeah. yeah, we've been bouncing around the globe doing some good things and uh, wanted to uh, just touch base on one of our main emphasis uh, this year and, and transformation and changing people's lives is through the Word of God and spread the Word. It's been an integral part of uh, Let's See Broadcasting, Let's See Ministries for over a decade now. That's right. I mean, spread the Word is a huge part of who we are and what we do here at Let's See Broadcasting. And uh, Feed the Hungry has always played a role in that, but even mm -hmm. more so now playing a, a central role in that as we work together to distribute Bibles. As uh, some folks may know, uh, we, we've gotten a, a new uh, batch, if you will, mm -hmm. of of Bibles that are uh, NIV Bibles. Uh, historically, right. we've always given out a, a King James uh, version, which is the one that these uh, beautiful children are reading and holding up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've shifted to a, an NIV version that I'm I'm really really excited about. Um, and actually, you just brought to the set yet yeah, another one that we got here. Just came in a a, a children's. NIV Bible, right? Uh, and I mean, I'm telling you, I can't be, couldn't be more excited about this. I mean, uh, I think the King James version is a good version for a lot of folks, but right. I think for a, a new believer, especially a children, child. a child like we just saw there yeah. in another part of the world where English probably isn't the first language, right? Uh, this this is going to make uh, such a difference. Yeah. I, I'm really yeah. excited about yeah. it. Yeah. King James, great version, very poetic. Uh, obviously, the language from the 1600s at older, older, older English. Yeah, I and, mean, let, uh, let's just be very real about it. I mean, if you or I just were to sit down and, and you know, especially the Old Testament, read the King James, it's it's fairly difficult to understand because mm -hmm. it's just not the way that we right. talk. Back in the day, that was the sure. common vernacular too. Sure. So that was the modern translation yeah. uh, in 1611 and, and beyond. But the uh, well, and and. and Without even getting into the NIV coming from the original Greek manuscripts and right. the King James right. coming from the Latin, et cetera, which yeah. was much later, of course. We yeah. won't even get into that. So, yeah, these are these are a, a great kind of a upgrade. And uh, whether it's a, the, the uh, NVI, which is the, the Spanish version of the NIV, the NIV, and then we are uh, looking forward to some direct language translations. Uh, the next one coming online that we're, we're trusting the Lord for is in Chichewa, which is uh, for the nation of Malawi. We've got some great outreaches there. But the intent and the, the aim is to, uh, especially for the 150,000 children that Feed the Hungry is ministering to, uh, to get them their own copy of the Word of God uh, so that uh, as they're being fed spiritually, I mean, they're getting the gospel and mm -hmm. we've got different mm -hmm. kinds of literature and, and Bible study materials that go out, but there's something special when you have your own Bible. And just being in Uganda, uh, we were able to hand out uh, some of the, um, uh, uh, let's see, broadcasting the Partner in Faith study Bibles with some of Dr. Sumrall's teaching notes uh, to pastors and church leaders in the mm -hmm. refugee camp where South Sudanese refugees are, are finding safety. And you would have thought we handed them a bag of gold because a yeah. Bible like yeah. that could be a month, a month to sure. two months salary or, or, or family income, put it that way. Sure. There's no way that they could ever obtain a, a quality Bible and, like that. And, you know, you, you see the images of some of these uh, kids who we've already passed out Bibles to in the past. I mean, uh, they're not putting that book down and then picking up their smartphone no. where they can get on, uh, you know, Bible Gateway or something on their phone and, right. and read the scriptures. So yeah. for, for a lot of uh, kids that we feed, in fact, maybe even all of them, this would be their only chance to uh, to have a Bible mm -hmm. of their very own. I mean, like you said, feeding 150,000 kids uh, every single day. I mean, how, how many of those do you think are, are in Central and South America? Uh, probably about 40, about maybe close to 40, 37,000. So maybe, so. Let, let's just say 40,000 kids. I mean, how great would it be if in the next 60, 90 days we were able to get a copy of this in yeah. the hands of every, every single one. one of those kids? Yeah. 
it would be tremendous. It's what I want to do. I know it's what you yes, want to do, but absolutely. that's why we need the help of the folks. Yeah, it really home. doesn't take take that much. It's no. $5 for, for yeah. one Bible to be uh, put in the hands of, of one of these kids and through it's our local you know, church partners there. So uh, it's not just like being thrown out the back of a truck. This is connecting them to the local missionaries and the local church. And a uh, case of Bibles, $180. And, and t talk about a Talk about a revolution, yeah. Stefan. I mean, get, getting a Bible in the hands of these kids in Spanish. Right. You know, the hands of a small child that will change their life forever. Someone who may live another, another 80 years. What an impact that could have. Absolutely. We want you to do what you can today as we are pressing forward to spread the word of God. You see the number on your screen right there, 1-800-365-3732. $5 to send one of these Bibles uh, to one of the kids that we're, we're, we're working with and, and seeing the Lord touch their lives. This will change their lives forever and for eternity. Do what you can. Maybe you can send us, sow a seat of $500 to send 100 Bibles. Uh, 200 Bibles would be a $1,000 gift today. Or maybe it's just five Bibles for a gift of $25. In fact, you can make that even a monthly gift if you like. And when you go to lacy.com, you'll find an easy way to link through. It'll take you about two minutes to get this done whether you call or whether you go online to spread the word and to change a child's life forever with the uncompromised and incomparable word of God. Look forward to, to your call coming in now and your visit to our website. Again, that's the same number as our prayer line. So if you have any prayer requests today, share that as well. We want to pray for you. On this Wednesday, April 12, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov say they aim to clear up sharp differences in a tense opening meeting in Moscow today. Tillerson and Lavrov were meeting amid rising tensions over Syria. Very open, candid, frank exchange so that we can better define the U.S.-Russian relationship from this point forward. Washington and Moscow are trading sharp accusations about a chemical weapons attack last week in Syria. And Syrian government-controlled media released video today showing what they say are Red, Syria Red Crescent ambulances carrying bodies from Kafaria and Fua to Aleppo. The footage is also said to show buses waiting at the Ramusa crossing to evacuate people in those two villages, both under rebel siege. The footage emerged as Syria's government and rebels exchanged some 30 prisoners and nine bodies, part of a larger agreement to evacuate four besieged areas in different parts of the country. Many critics say these evacuations are nothing more than forced displacement. Philippine troops battling militants on a central resort island have killed Abu Sayyaf commander Abu Rami. At least 10 people have been killed since Tuesday in fighting in Bahal, a region where the U.S. government warns the gunmen may be plotting kidnappings. Over a thousand families from nearby villages in the Philippines have been evacuated. Chinese President Xi Jinping told President Trump today Beijing is willing to work with Washington on ending North Korea's nuclear weapons program, but China wants a peaceful solution to the escalating conflict. During their phone call, Xi told Trump China insists on peace and stability on the Korean peninsula and wants to find a solution to the problem through diplomacy. The two leaders spoke Tuesday night after Trump said an armada of vessels, including the USS Carl Vinson, is steaming to waters off the Korean peninsula in a show of force. And security has stepped up today in front of the Signal Iduna Park Stadium in Dortmund ahead of the rescheduled Champions League quarterfinal that will be played tonight by Borussia Dortmund and AS Monaco. German authorities are investigating after three explosions went off near Dortmund's team bus ahead of the scheduled quarterfinal match Tuesday, injuring one of the soccer team's players. The match against Monaco was called off shortly before kickoff Tuesday evening following the blast near the team hotel, which authorities assume were targeted to hack. Coming up later, we have your prayer request. But up next, one of Christian music's most beloved groups, Selah, joins us to share the backstory of their new album, Unbreakable. We'll have that after this. 
Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. For 20 years, Selah's music has brought hope and healing while helping introduce hymns and timeless inspirational favorites to a new generation. Their signature anthems include You Raise Me Up and the number one hit, You Amaze Us. Comprised of Todd Smith, Alan Hall, and Amy Perry, the group has eight Dove Awards, and here they are today on Harvest. Could you believe it? Good to see you guys again. Good I think, uh, it's, I've, man, it's, we've kind of connected over the years for a long time, but you guys have really been making an impact for two decades now. Uh, just to start things off, what, were some of, what are some of your highlight moments over the 20-year career that you've had? Wow, I think uh, well, singing at Carnegie Hall was mm -hmm. a pretty amazing thing. Uh, we just sang last year, did a full concert at the Ryman Auditorium mm -hmm. in Nashville. And um, Grand the Grand Ole Opry. That's a Grand Ole Opry. Is that the same as the Grand Ole Opry? It's no, it's different. The Grand Ole Opry used to be at the Ryman at the Ryman, Ryman. Mm -hmm. right. yep. years yep. ago, yep. and then they've been since like '74. They've been at this other building, mm -hmm. um, but both places are just very historic. So yeah. those were those were some yeah. pretty big highlights. And and over the years, you know, touching so many lives, playing churches and concert halls and large venues, small venues. Um, I'm sure you've had, mul I mean, uncountable number of people say how your music has touched their hearts and lives. If you can think of maybe. Maybe a story or two where, where you know, you really sense the, the hand of God on, on the work that you do. Mm. You know, I, one that sticks out for me, this, and this was our second album, Press On, came out in 2001. Shortly after that, we got uh, an email from a, a lady. She said she was actually planning to end her life. Mm -hmm. And she had her handful of pills ready to take them. Mm -hmm. And she said the radio in her room, she said, I never listened to Christian music. Wasn't a, you know, wasn't a believer or anything. Never had, and... She said, for whatever reason, she said, I was about ready to do it. The radio came on, mm. and it was on, it was tuned to the Christian station, and she heard Press On, mm. and the, just the lyrics and everything. And she said she went right away and just threw the pills down the sink. You know, like she listened for a minute, and she's like, right. went through the pills wow. down the sink, and she wrote, she just said, I just want you to know that song had such an impact on me. And so she said, she said that song literally saved my life. And, wow. so, and that's the thing, like, you know, when we finish an album in the studio, when it's done and we send it off to the label to let them do their their side of it but we always pray over it and we and even during the song selection but you never know you know like we love hearing those stories because sometimes mm -hmm. we just release it and put it out there and so you we love hearing the feedback and knowing that it hopefully is making a difference in right. people's lives right it's connecting with with someone mm -hmm. at their at the right moment yes and you got to kind of trust the lord for for all absolutely. of that right absolutely so uh new project just came out a couple weeks ago unbreakable uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, just let's start with, with the title itself. Well, why, why the title? Um, you know, it was a song that came to us um, from a friend that is a songwriter. He writes for Toby Mac and Mandisa. So anything you like on the radio, he's probably written. Mm -hmm. uh, his name's Aaron Rice, and we're friends, and I had texted him in the studio and said, hey, you know, do you have a song you might want to send us that's that's a little more kind of radio friendly something we could just have fun with and he sent this song and it was so different from kind of everything we normally do it's kind of kind of a pop feel and i'm um, right. just very it's a cooler than us i guess but the lyrics <laughs> We've were got our so own dance routine for it yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> nice but the lyrics were so sound and yeah. that you know his love is unbreakable and that we can't escape it because mm. his love is always there and so um we just ended up really loving it and I think right away we kind of all knew that it was going to be the title. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally or, or typically, you always bring in a lot of the, you know, some new, some mm -hmm. old, some classics, mm -hmm. and some, some hymns as well. Why has that been kind of, I don't want to say formula, but why has that kind of been the, the, the MO of, 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 of your, your music? Yeah, it's, it's how we started out. Um, we Originally, my sister Nicole was in the group with us the first eight years. Amy's been with us for 12 years, so she's not really the new girl, but um, uh, when we first started out, uh, Alan's church asked if I would help lead worship. Mm -hmm. So then I wrote Nicole in when they asked us to do a concert, and we just picked favorite songs. And Nicole and I had grown up on the mission field in Congo. Yes, and yeah. so we used to, on Sunday nights, gather around the piano, and Mom would play, and we would just <coughs> sing one hymn after the other. So mm -hmm. then when we started recording, we're like, well, let's do it as well. Let's do His Eyes on the Sparrow. And mm -hmm. so that just kind of became a bedrock naturally for what we do. And for us, it's a great way to 
introduced to a younger generation, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of hymns that they may right. not be singing in church. Right, right, because they're so, I mean, the content is so rich and the, so, the, the connection the and the history and the theology is so, so sound, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I Got Saved is uh, the, the new single yeah. as well. Uh, and that, that's been an exciting song for you. It has been an absolutely exciting song for me. I, I forced them to do it. We were, we were <laughs> done with the album. We'd been recording for two and a half years. And, you know, you get to the point where you're just ready to, we're exhausted, let's, let's finish this up. And my wife was at a women's uh, retreat. She's an author. Uh, her name's Angie Smith. And she was speaking, and the worship team uh, was uh, singing a song called I Got Saved. And she heard it. And... Uh, the next day, like, finished her talk and was supposed to drive an hour to get to the airport, mm -hmm. but waited to record a mm. video of it so that she could play it for me. Wow. And then immediately said, can you guys record this? I'm like, no, we're done. Well, she right. wouldn't send it to me. She said, I'm going to play this for you when I get home. Played it for me, and immediately huh. I knew we had to record it. And you had to convince these guys to I had to get convince on board. these two. We probably should have just listened to it, and we would have loved it, but it was kind of like, Todd is the song he wants us to hear, and we don't yeah. want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Then when you finally listen, it's like, wait, yeah, we totally yeah, want to like, do this it's song. It's a great song. But we were just but, like, Because oh. like, the album, this album took a little longer. Usually we go in, it's pretty, we have our list, and it's pretty right. straightforward. Right. This one was done kind of in stages, like over probably almost three years. Oh, my word. So it That's took longer than normal. So the first round had gone pretty fast, and then it was like, what about this song? What about this? And then, and then of course, and then in the middle of that, we put out two extra little projects. And so, but those still take a lot of work, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and um, but so, so that's, it's, it's I mean, three-year investment to to put out an album. Is it is that the longest or largest it's investment you put in for about the longest? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we started real early on, like right after we released <laughs> "You Amaze Us," which was our previous album recording and then there were just breaks and then you know you'd mm -hmm. find new songs and uh, with I Got Saved one of the things that we're really excited about is we want people to share their testimonies because when I first heard the song it reminded me of when I accepted Jesus as a five-year-old mm. and so mm. we want people to you know uh, you know get on your phone and just in one to three minutes you know record your testimony your I Got Saved story and then cool. upload it to YouTube Very or cool. Facebook and just do hashtag I Got Saved yeah and then your name and share how Jesus saved you how you came to faith that's pretty cool I want to see that trending so well, I'd, we'd <laughs> love to we'd love to that, that's pretty powerful because there's nothing as powerful as the experiences we've had with Christ. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, uh, broke, is it Broken Ladders? Mm -hmm. uh, is a song on, on the album that's uh, especially significant to you. Why is that? Yeah, you know, it came at the kind of towards the end as well when we were just kind of, we don't know what songs we're going to be actually doing. And um, we ended up noticing that after we kind of had our done list, that like every song was Todd. And so it was <laughs> like, oh no, where's Amy on the album? <laughs> And so, which we don't normally, we're normally better about it. But we but just I think kind it was of, so spread out. it was so spread out that we didn't realize yeah. that all these great songs, like, were just kind of all Todd. So, um, our label guy kind of sent this song with an email that said, Hey, I hope Amy likes it, but if she doesn't, don't make her sing it, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I heard it, man, it just broke me in half because I've really dealt with my whole life just the weight struggle and um, back and forth, you know, being made fun of for my weight, being ridiculed and put down for it. And um, and so I just, you know, carried a lot of low self esteem. And then when I um, I lost like 80 pounds before I had my son. And then, you know, you get pregnant, you gain it all back. Sure. And so then yeah. there's the struggle of I'm trying to do this thing I've never been able to successfully do my whole life and be a mom. Mm. And so um, I just really, my son is amazing. He just turned five and he's really independent and pretty disobedient. And so um, <laughs> I just struggle as a mom feeling like I'm failing him every day, mm. you know, and, um, and then I travel and then I come home and my house is a wreck. And so I feel like I have to make it better and, you know, have the perfect clean house and, and cook and shop and do all the things that yeah. I like to do as a homemaker. And so I tend to kind of create this invisible standard mm. that I can't live up to. Mm. And so I just was constantly feeling like a failure. And this song came along and just reminded me that no one asked me to do anything. No one asked me to be complete. No one asked me to stand on my own and do everything in my own strength. All mm. God wants is our heart. And mm. if we'll just lay that at his feet, he'll do the work. And so every time I sing it, I just am reminded that I don't have to keep striving to be enough because I'm enough for God. Wonderful. Man, that's powerful. And that's what I like about uh, you guys. Is the music is real. It's meaningful. It touches hearts and souls, and it brings Christ close. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us today here on Harvest Show to connect with Selah and get a copy 
uh, let's say album. I don't know what you call them these days. I Downloads or albums. I still say record. <laughs> album. Vinyl records. <laughs> uh, their, their new release, Unbreakable, their new project. You can go to SelahOnline.com uh, for a link to Unbreakable. You can always go to our website, Harvest-TV.com. You'll find an easy way to link back to their site as well. We'll be back in just a minute. See Proline. Here in Malawi, in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. Do you long to visit the Holy Land but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the garden tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. Well, we've got some prayer requests in today. We'll be praying in just a moment. But if you have a need in your life that you want to take to the Lord in prayer, we'd love some help and guidance along the way and some agreement along the way, give us a call. 1-800-365-3732 is a prayer line number. If you're listening right now outside the continental U.S., you can call in plus one five seven four two nine one one zero one zero. And you can always email your prayer request into prayer at lacy.com. Our wonderful volunteers and prayer line staff will get that email. We'll take some time to read through it, pray through it, and send your response back as well. Yeah, I'm really touched by these prayer requests that came in today. We have Jean in Mississippi who says, please pray that Granny will be able to keep her job. She's mm. very concerned that it's in danger. She's a teacher and loves those kids. Mm. Brian in Indiana has been out of work for some time now and says he's ready to return. Please pray with him that God will bless him with a good job. And he says, I know he can. And Sandy in Pennsylvania is sad today and feeling lonely. Her husband is moving out. And she feels like she needs a change in her environment, maybe even a new job. Mm. Please pray that God will give me wisdom in this matter. Won't Amen. you pray for the viewers today? Amen. Lord, we are grateful that uh, you see our needs. And even before we can ask them, Lord, you're, you're aware and you're sensitive to those things that are pressing on our heart. We lift up these prayer requests to you, Lord, today for Jean, Brian, Sandy, and others that are standing in that place asking for, uh, for a job, for good employment, for a position, for a place to put their hands to work. Lord, we thank you for blessing them with, them with open doors today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thanks for joining us on Harvest. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We've got Randy Z, so you don't <laughs> want to miss tomorrow's show. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at Lassie Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lassie.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.